off by saying Cannes as Ducarno and the Berlin Alley, I guess, has reader in uh, in the feminist horror genre. Uh, welcome back to your stomping grounds. Mm -hmm. um, before moving into the mechanics of the film, I just this is a very distinctly indie film. Um, what was how did production look like for this? It was shot last year. Mm -hmm. So what what was the like the, the 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 speed of the production? How did it all come together? I mean, so typical, you know, we we waited for a long time and then like hurried up, you know, and, and jammed it into into production. So we were in pre-production starting like a year ago, today even. I mean, you know, we had a very small kind of like six weeks of pre-production. We shot it in Chicago in March, which is frigid. Um, it was originally set in, in New Orleans and then we were going to shoot it in Savannah. I wanted to put it in a place that had a, the architecture had some gothic tendencies. Mm -hmm. um, both of those places sort of during COVID became very different places to, to shoot a film. Um, and so not ideal. Uh, and so we looked at some options and I said, why don't we shoot it in Chicago so I can sleep in my own bed at night. Um, and we shot in March and April of spring, yeah, 2022 um, over an unforgivable 20 days. I mean, it was um, as fast as any production. It was not, they were not luxurious shooting days. I and mean, we had a couple days of, um, of pickups then um, in August where of course like leaves had, had returned to trees and you know, we had to make a kind of a sweltering Chicago August seem frigid again. Um, you know, like both a kind of well-oiled machine from day to day and, you know, sometimes, you know, chaos, even just driven by shooting out, out, out in a, outside in the cemetery all day when it wouldn't stop raining. You know, I mean, there's like, you know, elements that were mm -hmm. unforgiving as usual. But I also worked with the with um, a new uh, a new DOP, Sebdia Castrati, who was amazing. You know, we really shared a brain. I mean, I feel like, you know, the t the the two of us will absolutely work together again. But I worked with the same production designer for Knives and Skin, who I also share a brain with. So there were some there were some new people who who made production fun and fast. Um, and then some old people who also made production kind of comfortable and like um, shorthand. I hear you. Um, so from De Palma's carry to De Carno's raw, I was thinking about the moment where a patriarchal society railroads um, womanhood. Um, and those protagonists ultimately needed to incorporate antagonistic forces in order to get out of victimhood. Um, could you discuss the character of Johnny, uh, Johnny and how she diverges from this? I mean, despite her traumas, she defends her community and she truly channels his sisterhood. Um, and she has an, an innate understanding about, um, about victims, yet in many ways she isn't one. Mm -hmm. Um, so she's from the get go, she's, she's sort of like, if you think about those old horror films, this is a refreshing new page into be, uh, asserting a cer certain superpower from the get-go. I was just wondering if uh, if you could, um, yeah, talk about the construction of that character and how. Well, I really I wanted to I wanted to to, to introduce a, a kind of um, you, you know superpower supernatural. You know, uh, um, abilities, some 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 magical uh, tendencies to a character who was not asking for it at all, mm -hmm. was not looking for it at all, was not prepared for it, was simply trying to kind of live her life with her lame dad um, and her, you know, uh, sort of prickly, you know, great aunt in a in a school full of like, you know, shitty mean girls, or you know, I mean. She wasn't asking for this at all, um, and you know, physically even kind of not not prepared for it, which I uh, 
you know, I mean, I, 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 I like that. I like when that aspect has, has you know, uh, happened in other um, kind of, you know, uh, superhero stories or, or, or shapeshifter stories. You know, watching somebody navigate something really new and, and awkward when they weren't asking for it. And I, I, and I also wanted to see her like continue to have to navigate all that stuff mm -hmm. with all you know with these new abilities and not have it you know merely be about um uh yeah overcoming you know kind of one uh catastrophic you know event i never wanted her to you know never wanted to 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 set her out to uh, you know save the world i mean she she does ha she does get to you know overpower a, a, a super villain on the one hand mm -hmm. but I, I wanted I wanted to make um, I'm not at all setting this up for a sequel but I wanted it to be just the very beginning you know she's still like a like a like a pony you know on kind of wobbly wobbly legs and she you know we we sort of understand her kind of interpersonal sort of hardships just trying to kind of be a young person um with especially you know a, a dad who who sort of needs a parent himself you know which mm -hmm. we eventually realize has his own kind of things to deal with um but yeah i mean it, it felt it felt it felt like i felt like as the storyteller the person kind of making the puzzle pieces and solving the puzzle at the same time that that i needed to try to make something a little sort of fresh um you enlist the services of uh, uh, Alicia Silverstone, and post screening, I was I was thinking of her early career. She had this like man eater label with roles from The Crush, The Babysitter, perhaps even the Aerosmith videos. But then I started thinking about that label, and I started thinking about her as an actress and the sort of shit that she had to go through. Um, it's a really interesting paradox or conversation you're having there with her former characters. I mean, anybody who's watched 90s films remembers th those things. So I think it must have been super refreshing for her mm -hmm. to sort of like look back and say, oh God, we've, we're at this point now in film history. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, you know, she was actually somebody who I, who I was interested in casting for Knives and Skin for that exact reason. You know, I mean, I really... You know, I, I like casting people who have a personal provenance that um, is also narrative content. You know, someone to say like, oh, that's Cher, you know, all grown up with superpowers. Mm -hmm. um, and and absolutely understanding um, her, not just, not just who she's played as characters, but absolutely who she was... Um, thought of and, and labeled as a young actress. Mm -hmm. And um, it was not lost on her either. You know, I mean, she is, uh, she's incredibly smart, very curious, um, beautiful, engaged human. And so it was not also, um, it, it was uh, not accidental, you know, for her to be interested in this film in particular. I mean, even though she's made, she has a great small part in Killing of a Sacred Deer. Mm -hmm. She was great, you know, in the, in the Lodge. I mean, she's she's made some interesting, unglamorous film decisions recently. So when they said, we, let's, you know, we want to send it to Alicia Silverstone. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's see what happens. I mean, it didn't feel like, oh God, she's never going to say yes. Mm -hmm. Or that's not the kind of person that I think should play this part, etc. And, you know, she was on set. The first day that we shot with her um, was the night after the Oscars and the slap heard around the world. And so I was sitting with her in hair and makeup and I said, did you watch the Oscars last night? And she said, well, the funny thing is I got slapped at the Oscars too. And I said, hold on, what are you talking about? She's like, well, not really, but I was a presenter. I was 18 years old and Jim Carrey won an award. He was 36, 37 and came up on stage and kissed her. Un totally unprovoked. Mm -hmm. And she played the, the video back for me because it's, you know, you can still find it all, all over the place. And she just said, it's not until really like now as an adult that I can look back on that and understand how 
shocked I was, how awkward it was, because she didn't want to make him feel uncomfortable. You know, she said, if you look at, at it, you can see me, you know, like really resisting, but yeah. I didn't like rear back and punch him in the face. And so just knowing that she, that she has lived that, she's lived that in her own skin. Yeah. And, and again, now as an adult, sort of the matriarchy of her own story can look back and say, that was wrong. That yeah. was wrong. And that happened then, but it still, you know, it still happens all the time. And we're a culture obsessed with youth and beauty among young women. And we do everything we can to just like annihilate them and like disrupt their evolution. And we, we survive in, sp in spite of it. She survived and is thriving, you know, in spite of it, but it's exhausting. Yeah. And it was a whole, it's, it's as if that, that code of ethics is still, it's still omnipresent. Now it's still firmly has his grasp on, on, on young people. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I mean, it's, it's, a uh, it's, you don't have to be, you know, this kind of like young, young female celebrity. I mean, the kind of, you know, you, just being camera ready for Instagram, you know, for mm -hmm. the average 14 year old is, is, a uh, insane pressure, uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> um, when we talk about memorable horror films, we talk about the kills, the, the more interesting kills, but I want to say here, you, in, you infuse the film with a lot of great sci-fi ideas. Um, the shapeshifter mirror twitching image, uh, there's this really cool exercise of siphoning that exists in the film. Uh, but my favorite is the literal plunge into this red abyss. Um, and I was really curious about this facet. Um, the blood motif is, is very much a part of the film. And, um, and I, to me, I saw it as part of one's agency. Um, blood is strength and almost, um, almost wearing it as a badge. Um, so, so yeah, I just wanted to take that plunge back into that plunge and, and sort of like, what, what area does that come from for you? Um, I imagine that you filmed it maybe in a swimming pool. Um, le, le, yeah, just like incorporating that idea into the vocabulary of your film. Well, I mean, on the one hand, it's like, you know, just, you know, blood covered, blood soaked is such a, um, you know, is like a, can be like an overdone, but can also be, you know, a productive motif in you know in genre films so i wanted to i wanted to create something that was you, you know properly bloody on mm -hmm. the one hand um but gosh you know there's like that old joke like what can you know what can bleed for days and not die a woman you know so it and and yet you know in 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 commercials for you know tampons all over the world if you if you didn't know better, you would think that mm -hmm. that um, menstrual blood is pale blue, thin and pale blue, and so um, it also felt really productive to to kind of let you know let the film bleed and make the blood um, also m you know m magical and and sort of endless. Like what it, what's you know, what, what would be someone's like greatest fear, you know, kind of accidentally falling into like a vat of, of menstrual blood, for instance. And I don't know that necessarily like the big, the kind of fountain of blood, blood sort of pool of blood, well of blood is, is it's not strictly menstrual because we imagine it comes from sort of a, a, another, another wound in her chest. Um, but N nonetheless, you know, that's, that's a, it's, you know, that's not, not anywhere that someone would want to go per se, but it also comes directly from, you know, I'd wanted to sort of like bite off my own kind of carry moment too, you know, I mean, there's something that's so rad when, you know, Sissy SpaceX just standing there, you know, co covered in blood. I mean, that image of this beautiful woman in her, in her pale pink prom dress, just covered in blood is really powerful still. And, um, 
And so I wanted to, you know, Johnny has has a moment like that. And I remember somebody um, saying that that the, that that it felt like a relief every time you see a character covered in blood, that it feels like a feminist gesture because it's it it, it goes right back to the to like a, a newborn baby, you know, like the the sort of it goes back to to ch childbirth. And mm -hmm. when I heard that, I thought, oh hell yeah, like hell yeah, we you know, like women owned you know women own blood covered forever now. I'm fascinated by by the the breaknet pace that you're on right now it's just it's fun to see that you're always making films um and i was just thinking like i'm again i'm not really familiar with your short film filmography which is vast and huge yeah so is there a connective tissue between older short films and this film and are they having a conversation with each other i think that the i would say that the more recent short films are i mean honestly I felt like Knives and Skin was the kind of mothership, you know, to the more recent short films. Perpetrator is kind of like the, the, uh, like a, a, not unlike Hildy, like a great, a great aunt to that, you know, so it's not as related to the, to that world, but I, but it, but Perpetrator, oddly, is deeply related to one of the very first films that I ever made of any note, which I did in graduate school, which was a kind of a live action comic book about a girl superhero named White Trash Girl, whose bodily fluids were toxic. And whereas like Johnny, you know, people could call her wild and out of control as a way to diminish her agency. And then she becomes wild and out of control. Um, you know, White Trash Girl was sort of called like, you know, a, a gross, abject misfit, you mm -hmm. know? And so she was kind of like, oh, I'll show you gross and abject, you know? I'm going to kind of like spray you with my bodily fluids and it's going to melt your face. So, so oddly it is, it's the, 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 you know, whereas like Knives and Skin was, like I said, kind of like the mothership to the more, more recent narrative shorts. I feel like perpetrator is like is like the the more like the mother alien to this very gnarly experimental film that I made in grad school in like the you know the late nineties. Amazing. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.